When it comes to building a successful startup, there's three big components. Number one is team, number two is market, and number three is product. You can have an amazing team, an amazing product, but if the market is not big enough, if the market is not timed right, if the market is not ready for what you're trying to sell them, it won't work. In fact, you can have an amazing market, an okay product, and a mediocre team, but the market forces can be so strong it will still make you a successful startup. That's how important picking the right strategy around your market and sizing it properly and getting to an understanding of the total addressable market is so important. So on this episode, I'm gonna walk you through the three things you absolutely must know when you are picking the strategy around the right market to go after, figuring out the total addressable market, and figuring out how you're gonna go after that market. Intro. What's up everybody, I'm TK. Welcome to another Unstoppable episode. On this channel, I help startup founders, business owners, and entrepreneurs build an unstoppable strategy for their life and their business through belief and discipline. I drop an episode every single Sunday with the TK energy, so be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you get notified when I drop one. If you're a startup founder, there's probably two things that are on your mind. Number one, how do I go raise money? And number two is how do I get to product market fit? As you navigate those two things, the idea of the market you're going after is gonna be super important. Your fundraising pitch deck will have to highlight what the total addressable market is. And as you are building product and talking to customers, you'll have to figure out a way to find that fit between your product and the market so that you start to generate revenues. In order to do that well, one of the most common exercises that star founders go through is a market analysis. They try to figure out, well, what is the market we're going after? What's going on in it? And what is the total addressable market? Meaning, how big is this market? Is this ripe for us to enter into so that we can go close deals and win? After having bootstrapped a company and selling it, after starting a venture back company and then selling it, and then after working as a tech executive at another company that recently sold for $4.75 billion, in this episode, I'm gonna take everything that I've learned around market analysis and market sizing, and I'm gonna distill it down to the three things that you absolutely need to know, three things that are most often misunderstood by startup founders. So if you're excited to dig in, go ahead and smash the like button and let's get started. So before you jump into that slide in the pitch deck where you're trying to say this is a $50 billion market and every human's gonna need it and look at how huge it is, give us the money. The first step in this is to really identify what is your market. Now, there are a few questions you have to nail down just for yourself, like forget investors, just for yourself because you're gonna be spending the next 10 years if you're successful in trying to build out this startup you wanna make sure you're going after the right market. That's probably one of the most important things to nail down in the early days. So the first thing you really wanna figure out is are you going after an existing market or are you going after a new market? When you are going after existing markets, there's usually a three letter acronym for that market. There's usually a lot of analysts covering that market. And what you're gonna be able to figure out within that existing market is if there's some sort of big shift, big trend happening, which may be then leading to a new market. And what you really wanna hone in on is trying to understand exactly which market you're gonna go after. Are you creating a new solution that's gonna disrupt an existing market? Or are you trying to kind of get into an existing market and convince people to go after this new category and this new market you're gonna be creating? And getting clarity on that upfront is gonna make your life a hell of a lot easier. One of the biggest pitfalls that I see with startup founders is they try to enter into a target market and they ignore the landscape. They'll come in and say, oh, we do this, and it's some made up acronym that they made up because they wanna make it their own, they wanna make it their category. But in reality, there is so much marketing budget, so many conversations, so much mind share going on by the other companies that own an existing category and an existing market, and they're educating those people. When they go into the market and try to pitch their product with this made up three letter acronym that they did for their tiny startup, no one cares. Which is why it's super important for you to be honest about are you entering into an existing market and then trying to create a new one? Are you just creating a brand new one and you're that innovative? And are there big shifts that are happening and are there three letter acronyms for this market that you're trying to go after? One of the biggest lessons I learned the hard way in my career is that people used to think that there's this thing called first mover advantage. When you're creating something, it has to be new and innovative and 
unparalleled. The big thing that I learned, and this is a hard learned lesson that I want you to internalize for yourself, is there's no such thing as a first mover advantage anymore. Not really. In fact, the opposite is true. What's true is pioneers have arrows on their back. Pioneers have arrows on their back. I really want you to internalize that. Let me explain. What was the first social network that was created? What was the first search engine that was created? What was the first marketing automation company that was created? What was the first ride sharing company that was created? Guess what? The first social network was not Facebook, even though they're number one right now. The first search engine was not Google, even though they're number one right now. The first ride sharing company was not Uber, it was a company called Sidecar. The first marketing automation company was not Eloqua or Marketo or HubSpot, it was a company called Genius. In case you're not picking up on the pattern, Pioneers have arrows on their back. There were a lot of people that created this new category and tried so hard to make it a thing, and then eventually someone else came in and did it better and did it faster and was able to dominate. No such thing as first mover advantage. There's only a thing of being able to enter a market and shift how that market thinks and trying to up-level that messaging and do it better and serving them better. And when you do it that way, you don't need that first mover advantage anymore. What we need is to serve your customers better. So as part of step one, once you've really defined what market you're going after, you've laid out the landscape and you really understand what you're going after and how you're gonna differentiate and you're gonna try and avoid being a pioneer on this one, because trust me, it's not worth it. Then you get into step two. And step two is really figuring out how big is the market. Now, I've seen some pitch decks where they're really just trying to put a big number and say, this is how big the market is. Uh, I saw this one thing where they did some weird calculation about time lost by not buying their software tool and therefore it's an $86 billion opportunity. The, the reality is when you're doing an analysis like this, the only thing that matters is money being spent. Money being spent. If you do anything else, you start to lose a little bit of credibility with the investor because it starts to get really, really, really theoretical. So what you really wanna focus on is what is the amount of money being spent in this market today by the customers that we wanna go after? And when you start to understand it under that principle, there's generally two ways you can get to sizing up the market. Now, the first way is you can do a top-down analysis. If this is an existing market, let's just say you wanna create a new marketing automation platform. You can literally go on Google and say marketing automation platform market size, and there will be tons of analysts giving you exactly what the size is right now, how it's grown, and what they think it'll be by 2024. And you can use that to say, all right, if that is the total size of the market, this is why it's top down, what part of that pie can we go after initially to go dominate based on our unique point of view that we have, and that's why we're gonna go enter this existing category and differentiate. Now, you might be saying, you know what, this is a brand new category, they're, just, like, they're not spending money on this, and so what you can do then is you can go in and say, and do a bottoms up analysis. And the bottoms up analysis is more theoretical, uh, is what you, where you say, all right, how many people or customers or buyers are there in this market that would buy something like this? And at, on average, how much can we sell it for? And you basically take the number of buyers that you can count and times it by the average deal size that you have, and you have a market count. Is it very accurate? Probably not, you'll have to prove it, but it's a place to start for you to understand how big this market is. I'm not gonna even pretend to be biased here. Your best way to build a startup is try and figure out a way to go after existing dollars being spent in an existing market. You wanna enter that market in a certain way where you can actually compete in a differentiated way and steal those dollars away. This strategy is what Uber used. Uber didn't start with UberX and Uber Pool, they started as a black car service with a better experience. Marketing automation didn't just start with marketing automation. Yes, there was a religion around it, but they started saying, all right, people buy email tools and email tools aren't equipped to manage the buyer journey and attribute for revenue. So we're gonna start with an email tool. And if you actually think about Google, Google started with an existing market of, all right, people are searching for stuff. And once they laid that out, they earned the right to build out AdSense and the suite of products that they have all around that search engine to actually monetize and become the juggernaut and mo monopoly that they are today. 
And you might say, you know what, those companies are so old and they're like 10 years old, but still, let me give you a present day example of this. A present day example is a company like Drift. There's no secret, I love Drift, they're awesome. They're in the conversational marketing space. And yes, that is a new category. That is a new conversation. That is a new way of doing things. But if you really dig in, which market are they really in? They're targeting B2B buyers. They're targeting the sales process and the lead capture process. And they're targeting the experience someone gets when they start to fill out and engage with the brand. That's totally marketing automation. And let's not kid around here. So when you really think about it, the smartest companies start with an existing market with a differentiated conversation and then earn the right to go huge after that. It's the companies that try to be a pioneer. They try to start this brand new thing that no one recognizes and they can't even slot it into something they recognize right now and have money for right now. It's those companies that slog along for years until they either give up and die or they pivot into what customers are asking for and actually start to give the customers what they want, which is closer to an existing market. And then they earn the right to go innovate on top of that. Now, before I go to number three, which is super important, let me just kind of pause over here for a second. I hope you're starting to see the difference in how I think about markets. Because the market, as startup founders, we're problem solvers, we wanna go build product, we wanna build our teams. But when you really think about it, the market is the thing that matters the most. Markets, when they're strong, everything else is so forgiving. But when markets are not strong, you have to work that much harder to break through. So doing the analysis on really figuring out what market you're in, where the customers are, and actually defining that market and understanding how you can wedge into that market is super, super important. And if you do that, everything becomes so much easier when you pick the market right. If you're starting to get this, if you're, starting, if you're with me, Go ahead and put a yes in the comments below because I want to hear from you. Now, step three of this is, okay, you did the analysis, you have this giant number and you can put it on the slide, got it, good for you, but it doesn't end there. You really have to mobilize this market analysis that you've done. So what you want to do is take your TAM and then identify your ideal customer profile within that TAM. I love ideal customer profiles. I love them so much that I did three videos on them. I won't link to all three. I'll link to them, I'll link to them down below. But if you want to start to take your TAM, once you've identified the market and this opportunity and it's big, once you want to whittle it down to what you really want to focus to start to get traction, you'll want to create an ideal customer profile. If you're going to have a customer profile, I did a whole episode on this. So check out this video where I'll walk you through exactly how to create an ideal customer profile. Once you create that ideal customer profile and you will see in that video all the principles behind what goes into that, what you'll then want to do is figure out how you're going to go to market to this ideal customer profile. You, I, you validated the market. Now you have your ideal customer profile, which are most likely to buy what you're selling right now with your differentiated messaging. And then you wanna actually build out your go-to-market. Now I did an entire video on how to build out a go-to-market strategy, specifically an unstoppable sales funnel. You can check that video out here and I'll walk you through how to take your ICP and go build out a funnel so you can start generating customer conversations and start closing deals. Once you do all the three of those things and do the analysis on that, you'll start to understand how big is the opportunity, you'll start to understand who to focus on first, and you'll also start to understand what it's gonna to take to close deals with them. Are they gonna just sign up on your website and swipe a credit card? Are they gonna pay $30 a month? Are they gonna do six-figure deals and you have to hire salespeople and SDRs? Are they like million-dollar deals and you have to do one-year-long enterprise sales cycles? You're gonna to start to figure that out. And the reason that's important in this whole total addressable market exercise is it'll give you an understanding of what the funding requirements for your business is. Once you map out, this is my market opportunity, this is the part I'm gonna go after first, here's when I'm gonna go to market with them and this is what it's gonna cost me and here's how I'm gonna have to do it. You start to understand how much money it's gonna to take to start to get the wheels going. And that will give you insight into, is the opportunity big enough? And if it's big enough, can I, should I go raise a certain amount of money? Or is the opportunity medium enough and I should be able to bootstrap this and make it a self-service business? you'll start to understand what the levers are so that you can do what you do best as a startup founder, which is ship code and close deals. So in summary, when you are building out this market analysis and building out your total addressable market, number one is be very purposeful about what market you are entering and understanding it. Number two is figure out how big that market is. 
whether you do a top-down analysis or a bottoms-up analysis. And then number three, take that TAM, build an ICP, build out your go-to-market strategy, and figure out what your fundraising requirements are going to be. Now you know how to think about markets, you know how to analyze markets, and you know how to figure out your total addressable market. And remember, it's money being spent. That's what matters the most. Now that you know how to actually build all this stuff out, you might wanna dig more into how to actually pitch this to investors. This is why I did an entire video on how to create a six slide startup pitch deck, specially highlighting how to frame this total addressable market and the opportunity. So you can check that out here. And lastly, I believe that every startup should have a one page startup strategy. It outlines the most important aspects of your business from your market to your go to market strategy to your brand strategy. This is why I created my six point startup strategy guide. It walks you through through a set of simple questions that you can answer how you can define your startup strategy. It's completely free, so just follow the link below and download it, and I have a special offer for you inside when you do download it to work with me directly. And lastly, if you like this video and got value from it, please hit the like button. It would mean the world to me and my team. We put a lot of effort into taking complicated stuff in the startup ecosystem and distilling it down to three or four things that you just absolutely must know so that you can be like, all right, got it, let me get to work. We drop a video like this every single Sunday as well to help you become unstoppable in your life and your business as a startup founder. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you get notified every single time I drop an episode. And also, if you know another startup founder or you're part of a Slack group or an email list of startup founders that would get value from my videos and my channel, I drop a video every week on building startups and helping startup founders thrive. So please share it, it would mean the world to me. And lastly, remember, everyone needs a strategy for their life and their business. When you are with us, yours is gonna be unstoppable. I'm TK and I will see you next Sunday.